Juan Bian here bringing you Avatar 2 review. Is it too late? Let's find out. I watched this in 3D, which was astonishing. Highly recommend you go watch it in 3D. Some of the scenes there really pops out at you, especially a movie like this. I mean, nowadays, 3D movies tend to be non-existent. This movie brings back that 3D look, and I think that's the way the movie was supposed to be viewed. Definitely try and watch it in 3D if you can. But getting into the review, the big elephant in the room, the CGI. That's where most of the budget seems to have gone, which is honestly not a bad way to spend your money. <laughs> the studio's money. James Cameron literally went above and beyond with this movie. He decided the whole film is literal VFX. It focuses on the oceans of Pandora. This movie really made me feel like I was literally there alongside the characters, you know, experiencing Pandora, experiencing the narrative unfold. I do have to say, the film does a really good job at establishing the setting and reintroducing a bunch of these characters that were already there from the previous movie, right? Because Avatar 1 came out back in, what was it, like 2013? 2009. So, many, many years later, the sequel arrives. And some people may or may not have re-watched the previous film when coming into watching this movie. Towards the start, I was just a little confused as to who was who, but eventually you do catch on. When I was actually coming out of the movie, I noticed that this movie tends to be more of an observational type of film. A lot of the time we're watching and observing the characters do what they do, make their choices, because we're a bit unsure as to, you know, what's going to happen next. And each scene is spent more detailed, is spent more on environment. This is a stylistic choice that James Cameron decided to go towards. Priority for this was to really stretch the boundaries of the special visual effects of this film. Personally, for me, I couldn't see myself watching this movie twice. It's very hard for me to go and rewatch a movie once I've already seen it. Not saying that it's a bad movie, I just personally think given a long runtime, I kind of have to really be in the mood to go watch it because I remember James Cameron pretty much saying that, hey, since it was a long runtime, you know, don't worry, go to the bathroom anytime because you'll be back to watch it again. Yes, it's a good movie, but if I'd missed a scene, I probably wouldn't spend any cinema ticket price to re-watch that movie or I'd probably forget about it. I also enjoyed the uh, the choice of the antagonist of this film. Uh, Stefan Lang plays the same villain as the first movie, but this time he is reincarnated into Avatar form. Now he's actually got the powers, the strength of an Avatar. Him, Jake, match. Touch base on the plot. Colonel Quaritch, you know, has his vendetta. He wants to get revenge on Jake. The humans, something's happened on Earth. They want to pretty much use Pandora as their new home. We've got the sea marines there, they're harvesting the Pandora's versions of whales. Point is, they're harvesting the whales for their brain juice because their brain juice actually stops the aging process. So in saying that, you know, I know this story was told from the Avatar's perspective, but it just made me think like, what if it was actually told from the human's perspective? What I'm trying to say is you can't really blame humans for doing what they're doing. Not all problems are black and white, sometimes they're morally gray. I guess it's something to think about. Yeah, look, this movie, it does not feel conclusive because we do know that there are plans to have five movies in the series. Storyline-wise, this movie does feel part of the overarching storyline. It did complete the storyline for the movie, but it just felt like there was obviously still more bases to be touched upon. There's still humans on that planet that want to populate Pandora and transform Pandora into their new home, which I think the following movie will probably delve into. Actually an interesting morally dilemma because it's like, hey, if humans need a home, can they maybe coexist? Or is it just gonna be all out war survival of the fittest? Guess we'll know in a few years, huh? One thing I kind of was like, really? Was more or less one of the only human characters that were part of the Avatar tribe, Spider. Turns out to be Colonel Porridge's son. He stumbles upon Colonel Porridge drowning and then he looks at him and he's like, ah, fine, I'll save you. And I was like, really? Like, why would you save a man that if you're aligned with Avatars, you know, the Avatar tribe, and he captured you and forced you to do these horrible things? But I understand why they did it. They needed to continue the movie to make five more movies. So, you know, there's some sort of overarching plot left there. Overall, I thought this was a thoroughly enjoyable movie. For three hours, you're definitely getting your money's worth. And it did what a movie was supposed to do, encapsulate you and distract you from whatever's going on right here into a new world to experience a story, a narrative, especially in 3D, it definitely did the job. But one last thing, movies like this, James Cameron, if you ever so happen to watch this video, they should bring back intermissions. Especially, I don't know what the future Avatar movies are gonna be like. They're gonna be long, 
I'm all for it. I'll enjoy. I'll take that three hours. But I'd like an intermission. It gives people a chance to fill up on their food because I know if I'm having popcorn or a drink, that's all demolished in 10, 15 minutes. Even in the previews and the movie starts, like, oh, my popcorn's finished, especially if I get like a small or medium. <laughs> you know, at least the intermission gives you a chance, you know, fuel up, go to the toilet, empty yourselves out, get a fresh cup of Coke, fresh popcorn, fresh Maltinas. My recommendation for this movie, I didn't eat anything because the popcorn being salty, it makes you thirsty. So you drink the Coke, you feel satisfied, you watch, and you're like, in three hours, that'll go right through you, and then you can find yourself busted. And you try to focus on the movie, but now you're distracted, thinking about when is the best time to literally go to the toilet. Yeah, if you're gonna watch this movie, I know it's a long one, but try not to bring anything with you. So that is my review, that is my take on the new Avatar movie. I hope I provided some insight into the movie, some thoughts for you guys. Stay safe, and uh, well, I'm gonna catch you in the next one, all right? Peace.